right? So we left off with Colvin's comment that takes us, you know, neatly into chapter nine, which really I don't think I need to dwell that much on, and I won't read through it, understand some of the basic arguments. But what is this whole thing of the built-in environment? Well, um, the built-in environment, if you, have if you have individuals and you have neighborhoods, the built-in environment exists at a, at, a, at a very high level, right? At a very sort of macro level in terms of the neighborhoods that we are immersed in. Um, um, uh, UTSA, you guys that come to campus, um, there is a built-in environment, there's a built-in environment which allows UTSA to be located where it is, the main campus. So built-in environment, yeah. Tell me some of the things that allow this campus, the main campus, to be here. It's self-sustaining. It what? It has, uh, well, it has all the things you need right here by, like laundromats, liquor store, restaurant. Liquor store? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Well, college, oh, okay. I mean, uh, Let's do a couple things. Yeah, no, you're right. The stuff you need is out here, but now the city's growing up out around it, but at first it was like out here kind of just by itself. Um, look, uh, no, no, you're absolutely right. The built-in environment is at a very macro level. The things that we create, the streets, massive architecture, highways, roads, um, the built-in environment that we find ourselves in. If you compare the built-in environment of 1604 UTSA with the downtown campus, what are some differences? What are some differences in the, what surrounds us here at the main campus in, on, off of 1604 and the surrounding area of the downtown campus? Well, we're definitely, it's a lot more open here, you know, it's not us, because downtown obviously you're surrounded by more smaller buildings, so downtown definitely feels more condensed, you know. Yeah. Downtown is tiny. So one is simply space, right? One is simply the notion of, of space and this built-in environment. Um, the built-in environment of the main campus I mean, 30 years ago, this was just wide open, right? This was just wide open farming, farming land. So first of all, you just have expansive space for people to move, for people to walk, right? For people to get from point A to point B. So the built-in environment of the 1604 campus is potentially more conducive to do the types of things that students wanna do, right? And why we have not only the size, but the demand for classes is it higher here or is it higher at the downtown campus? It's higher here. It's much higher here, right? I mean, we need to work hard to get students to go to the downtown campus. I know a lot of adults do, right? A lot of adult students, and of course, we've got architecture and other things that are going on down there. Just right. sent, I mean, emailed all of us. Yeah. What's that? I said Roma just sent out an email today, actually, about her class on time. The one that was registering. Oh, I have. I plead the fifth on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're talking about, the syllabus. Uh, yeah, we're talking about classes in, in our own sociology department, right? Trying to get people to come to the downtown area. And you would think, actually, right, you would think that maybe people would want to be down in those areas, but that doesn't seem to be the way that it often plays itself out. Um, do you think that there's anything about the built-in environment at the UTSA downtown campus that keeps people from wanting to take classes down there? Oh, that keeps people? Yeah. Um, the number one thing, despite what I just read, was I find the parking very confusing, just getting to it. I don't know how much space, you know, if they okay. have enough parking space. Even. Okay. Um, the I was parking just going to say, the parking is actually like the simplest. <laughs> I, I always have a hard time it's figuring out where like I can get exit. in. So. Oh, parking lot. Well, look, this is, look. And there's I, always parking, too. Think oh, of yes. always. <laughs> they don't offer many programs down there. Okay. Yeah. That's well, a big thing, I would think. That's interesting. Think about, think about part of the built-in environment as something like how things are zoned. Zoning? Zoning. Um, there's potentially laws downtown that are going to prohibit how much parking you can have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Um, and so how those zoning laws affect the entire makeup of a community 
is what's at stake here. So think, for instance, this. Uh, where are we allowed to put toxic waste? Where can we put it? I mean, we got all this garbage, we got all this toxic waste, we got all these labs here, right, at the 1604 campus, got all these labs that are generating all this toxic waste, right? You gotta take all your little hazmat training and all this stuff. So where do we dump all this toxic waste? Well, the government says we're allowed to. We can only put it where we're allowed to put it. And one place I can guarantee you we're not putting it is next to the Dominion, right? Yeah. I guarantee you we're not putting it next to the Dominion. Um, so that in itself is a good measure of how neighborhoods are impacted at a very macro level. What's going to happen to pe people's mental health when they are impacted by their proximity to toxic waste? It's going to go down. How so? What do you mean? Because um, even just knowing that you're in a kind of almost essentially kind of like having a poor neighborhood, just being in a bad environment or what you even perceive as a bad environment, that's, you know, if you get, when you get off work, you might leave from a stressful job. Last thing you want to go to is home, which you feel is stressful because you feel, okay, how is this toxic waste? Is it possibly affecting me? Is it getting into the water? So for me, it'd be fear and paranoia. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, right? Where am I walking? What am I drinking, right? What am I being exposed to? Are those landlines exposing me, right? Is, are my kids playing? Are my kids playing in, in places where there's toxicity seeping out of the streets? All these things are bound to affect the way that people live. And if the way that people live is sort of an impediment to living a generally healthy lifestyle, it, you have to think it's gonna affect their mental health outcomes. Um, uh, the book discusses the idea of sense of community. A sense of community. It's sort of the sense that we're, we're kind of in this together. That my neighbors and I, um, my neighbors and I are sort of in this together. Um, we are all part of this one community. We look out for each other. Uh, we worry about each other's needs. So often these macro level forces can directly impact this sense of community, right? Because if the neighborhood is dirty, if the neighborhood is close to toxic waste, why would I wanna be outside, right? Uh, I lived in Rogers Ranch for many years and all it took was a nice warm evening for the entire neighborhood, the, or at least a block, a block of people to all be sitting around a cul-de-sac telling stories, talking, bringing in food, and everybody chatting it up. That creates a sense of community, right? But I guarantee you, Rogers Ranch was nowhere near toxicity. It was nowhere near high crime rates. Uh, people felt comfortable in their surroundings. So the question often becomes, as it's framed in this book, is why is that sense of community so tied in the United States to the socioeconomic surroundings that people live in. Why is it that the sense of community is stronger potentially in places where there is um, higher value placed on the homes in those neighborhoods? It wasn't always that way, it doesn't have to be that way, but we have ourselves, according to the authors of your book, created the kind of structural social circumstances that would lead to this to happen. Here's the final thing I'll say. Um, some people argue that the downtown UTSA campus is going to, it's difficult because I've heard it said, I've heard it said, it doesn't work out as well because it's in the city, right? It's too close to downtown. It's down there. It's over there. It's close to downtown. So what are people often linking downtown to? Oh, traffic. More traffic. What else? What's that? It's it's close. It's closer to bad neighborhoods. A lot of homeless. There's there's homeless. It's close to the homeless, right? There's more homeless closer to downtown campus. It's uh it's closer to bad neighborhoods. I've just seen a few homeless people hang out on the campus in the winter time. So What's coming? 
So, say that again? So, um, in the winter, usually a lot of homeless people hang out on the campus. Not a lot, but yeah, you have no, seen but them they just do. be inside, eat their I've lunch, seen them. You know? I've seen them, and I don't think... Right? Sometimes they're on the couches and stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 So a lot of a lot of people like a lot of people make this argument that the it, it's very difficult to have a vibrant downtown campus because it is closer in proximity to all this sort of social disadvantage. That's why you can't get students to go down there because it's an urban campus and urban campuses don't work, right? People students want to be in a college atmosphere. They want to be in Ann Arbor. They want to be you know they want to be a they want to be in Athens, Georgia, um, you know. But as anyone that looks at public policy and studies these issues, tell me that about George Washington University, right? George Washington University is right smack dab in the middle of in the middle of Washington D.C. Tell me that about NYU, Columbia, right? Mm -hmm. Great universities in New York City, which are right in the heart of the city. What about UT? How about UT? Right? How about UT? UT Austin is right smack dab it's in the middle of the city apart from the school. Yeah, right smack dab in the middle of the city. Now, granted, uh, Austin is not New York and it's not Chicago and it's not even DC, right? It's probably bigger than DC, but DC is a vibrant metropolis. And these universities seem to be functioning fine in these urban centers. But they function fine in these urban centers because there's probably something about that macro level public policy approach to having these major universities in these right big inner cities. They know how to manage these big universities in urban settings. And I'm not quite sure that that's what's happening here at UTSA. It may happen in the future. Maybe it happens in the future, maybe it doesn't. But think about people living in these situations. So, and, yeah. But didn't most of those universities start out there before there was a big city? Uh, there, sort of like all around you. Like trying to transplant something into what's already a downtown is different from having a university in the 1800s and then a city springs up. Yeah.